Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Big Time Strength Podcast. This is episode 108, and I get to have a coach on that that I've been following for a while, getting to see a lot of his stuff on social media. And really, the biggest thing is I've had a couple of coaches tell me that that I need to reach out to him. So I, I love the refer, referrals from other coaches. Um, I think one of the, the awesome parts of my job is I get to learn from people all over the nation, right? Like, so selfishly, you know, like I'll tell you straight up, the reason why I do this is because I want to learn. And and a couple of people say, hey, reach out to Coach McGee. And I think this is, this is an awesome way just to continue that learning, but let other people learn too. And I, I've been talking to him a little bit before the show and uh, it sounds like he's excited. It sounds like he's a, he's a good dude. And um, we'll let you guys decide that, I suppose. So um, before we get started with the show, I want to thank our sponsors and let you know that these people that care, they, they want your, your high school, your college, whatever to succeed. And, and uh, we're so thankful for them. So the first one's team builder. Team Builder is the leading software for high schools and colleges by providing the ability to write programs online, generate over 13 reports, and even train athletes remotely for side income. So right now, if you use the, the code BIGTIME, you'll receive a free APRE programming template, which works automatically with Team Builder. So if you're at Team Builder School, you already got that, go for it. If not, it's like an introductory type thing um, where it gets you started with that. You get like a 14-day free trial and and uh, their crew is really good at like just answering questions and making sure. And if you want to extend your trial, and I know a couple of coaches have told me that that's happened too. So just, if you want to reach out to them. So what they're doing is it's giving you an opportunity, no more spreadsheets or workout cards to track training maxes that change by day, day by day. You can automate that training um, without outsourcing your, your programming. And, and one of the cool things with this is, you know, over this COVID time, all that type of stuff is, man, you can, you can make updates really quick and make sure that, you know, everybody's on the, on the right path. And so team builder, uh, if you're looking for a software, uh, hit up team builder. Um, and then the second, the second sponsor that we have is powerlift and powerlift. Um, I've said it before, uh, they are the heavy duty strength training equipment. Um, I, I talk about my, my uh, weight room at Northwest Missouri state and those racks are like 20 some years old now. They look brand new. And I, I'm not just saying that. I mean, the paint, everything, and the, it's like nine gauge steel or something like that. It literally just looks exactly the same as it did at the beginning. And, and uh, I think it's, it's a really solid uh, product. And the guy that I worked with when I was at Northwest and the guy that I still reach out to is Mike Richardson and, and his contact information is in the show notes. But Powerlift is the leading manufacturer of heavy duty strength training equipment for collegiate and high school athletic programs. Um, around the world. Powerlift brings over 20 years of experience to strength and conditioning. Um, all products are manufactured in their state of the art manufacturing facility right here in Iowa. That's where I'm recording from. So it's Jefferson, Iowa is where they're at. And Powerlift is, is per, uh, really proud to support all coaches that are making the big time where they're at. So um, I'm, I'm super, uh, super pumped up to have those sponsors and, and to, to allow us to interview coaches that, that are like coach here. So I, I want to, give coach a, a good introduction here and then he can fill in his bio anything that I miss or he wants you guys to know. So um, coach is the director of strength and conditioning at American Christian Academy located in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Uh, he's responsible for all athletes seventh through 12th grade. And th that's pretty cool to me. And I am a, and he's a certified strength and conditioning specialist through the NSCA and a proud member of the NHS SCA. Uh, his education background, he's got his bachelor's, um, degree in exercise science from the University of Alabama, master's degree in coaching um, and athletic development from Xavier University, and past jobs and roles include a few things here. So he's got Godspeed Elite Sports Academy volunteer intern, and, and um, then he was at the University of Alabama for a huge chunk of time from fall 2016 um, through uh, spring 2019, working with all sports there, and then Bibb County High School Strength and Conditioning, um, that was 2018 to 2019. And then um, this American Christian Academy director of strength and conditioning is from summer 2019. So he's, he's still what I would still call fresh where he's at. And I love these episodes because I really love diving in deep to how he got it started, where he's at now, what his vision is for the future. So this is good stuff, coach. Um, welcome to the show. I know it's a long intro. Uh, please take it away. Coach, uh, so good to be on the show. Uh, man, I'm just humbled and honored to to be on this on this podcast, I've been listening to it for a long time and been a big fan of your show. So uh, excited to talk to you tonight. 
So, uh, Coach, here's here's the thing. When when I got people that are excited to talk, then I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that they get that opportunity to talk. So, Coach, is there anything that from that background can you fill in just a little bit of how you got where you're at now, and and kind of um, maybe the steps along the way that got you there? Yeah. So, uh, like you said, I started out at the University of Alabama doing my undergrad there, and. Uh, I kind of, I've, I've kind of always been a meathead at heart and love lifting weights and training. And uh, once I got in college, I came across, uh, you know, exercise science. And I knew that was really interesting to me, trying to figure out, you know, what I wanted to do with my career the rest of my life. And uh, I got, decided to choose my major, exercise science. And uh, that was about sophomore year of college. Uh, I was looking up, just trying to find out different jobs I could get with that degree and came across the NSCA, the National Strength and Conditioning Association, and it just so happens they were having a, a state clinic uh, right down the road from Tuscaloosa and Birmingham, and uh, I got to look in, and it was only like fifty dollars to go or something like that, and uh, so I was pretty interested to see what it was about. So I went to uh, this state clinic, and uh, I just heard all these different coaches present and and talk about strength and conditioning and the science behind it. And uh, legendary Johnny Parker was the was the main guy that uh, that spoke and and I was just I was just hooked after that man I knew coming home from from Birmingham that day that uh, strength and conditioning was was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life so uh, shortly after that I got home and uh, came across the Godspeed opportunity and uh, that was kind of like my first opportunity to get my feet wet in the game and uh, learned a lot just in that short amount of summer with uh, Lance Rhodes and uh, Austin Womack another guy and they kind of took me under the wing and showed me just the, the ropes of strength and conditioning, just, uh, just everything like that. And then after that, uh, I rolled into fall of my junior year, and I knew if I had any shot of getting in strength and conditioning, I had to get experience in that weight room. Like, I knew I couldn't let that, that opportunity pass up at Alabama. Uh, so I, I basically emailed every strength coach I could find at Alabama in that weight room, emailed them, just basically begging them if I could come – volunteer or work or something like that and uh I got a couple of emails back from from Jim Hamner and uh Michelle Diltz and uh Michelle Diltz she's the softball head softball strength coach at Alabama and uh she kind of took me under her wing and uh we started out started out working with her and uh got an opportunity to work with softball and swim teams and things like that to start and then uh shortly after that I got the opportunity with football uh that was January of 2017 and uh, so just more sports came on, got an opportunity to work with a bunch of different sports in Alabama. And uh, that, was, that, was, that was probably where I grew the most as a coach, honestly, just because uh, Michelle, Coach Dillis just did such a great job of, of giving us autonomy and giving us opportunity to coach and, and actually learn how to coach on the floor. And uh, she put me in a lot of uncomfortable situations that helped me grow as a coach. And uh, shortly after that, I graduated. And uh, I knew it was time for – for something new and uh i came across uh the master's program in xavier and i was i was wanting to continue my education and uh i reached out to my alma mater which is a uh, bibb county high school and uh just asked them if they need any help in the weight room and uh i kind of tell people that was like my grad assistantship you know because i was i was in grad school earning my master's but and i was doing it online and uh, that was kind of like my GA position. Uh, so I kind of was, I was in charge of football, uh, baseball and basketball at Bibb. And they basically handed me the keys and was like, you know, you got it. So uh, that was my first opportunity really with a team uh, that was my full responsibility. So that was learned a lot in that year and a half at Bibb on, uh, you know, how to run a program. And uh, then shortly after that, you know, uh, the ACA job came, came knocking and, that was, that was my dream job, man, uh, landing in a private Christian school, uh, just full-time role. It was, I'm, I'm the first one they've ever had, so I knew I could build it from the ground up and uh, got there, started there May of, or May or June of 2019, last year. So I've been there uh, about a year and a half now. So uh, couldn't be happier. Coach, that's awesome. One of the things that I pick out, some of the words that, that you were talking about was the autonomy and responsibility and and you, you said you kind of thrown into the fire a little bit and, and um, you talked about kind of like a graduate assistantship and, 
and really the first times that you got to work with teams and they were your teams and all of that stuff. And it was, it's funny, I was just having a conversation with one of our coaches um, at Mount Vernon and, and we're just talking about when you want people to grow, you have to give them responsibility and you have to give them yeah. autonomy. And, you, and what you see with the different styles of leadership is there's some people that will give you that autonomy and say, Hey, you got this, you can do it. And they encourage and they empower you. Then there's others that are like micromanagers and you just don't ever feel like you're trusted and that type of stuff. Um, when, when I look at all of this and then transfer it to our student athletes, what's it look like maybe using some of that language, but then also just you building culture in general, going into a school, you've been there for about a year and a half now. What's it look like to build it from the ground up knowing what you know now? Uh, man, it was, it was an awesome opportunity, uh, you know, because like I said, they never had a full-time uh, strength and conditioning coach at the school. So uh, I, knew I, had, I knew I had my work cut out for me, but I knew it was going to be something that, that I wanted done, and I knew I could do it exactly the way I wanted it to be done because they didn't know anything before. But, uh, you know, going – I think I took a lot, especially from, from my time at Bama, learning under Coach Diltz and – and uh, I've tried to just take a little bit from, from every experience that I've had up until this point. And, uh, you know, I think, like you, like you said, man, giving, giving autonomy is something that's in my life has been huge. Uh, and, you know, I think it's important to, to give that in your kid's life because you say the word empower, man. I was, that, that, that's, that's what I think about when I think about, like, like Coach Diltz. I mean, she, she pushed us, but, but she empowered us to, to go out there with confidence on the floor and coach and, 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 and do a lot. So I think that's important with your kids, man, to, to give them autonomy for, for their workout or whether it's their reps or sets or something like that sometimes. I think that's important. That's awesome. Coach, what, what was kind of like the first thing that you did when you got hired um, and you're taking over this program or not taking over, you are starting this program. What was kind of, I don't know, your checklist or your to-do or the thing – the thing that you want to do at the top and then maybe the next two or three things after that, that, that you got things rolling in the right direction. Yeah. Well, number one, I knew I had to meet with the, the head sport coaches. I think that's, I think that's number one most important thing you can do as a new strength coach at a school is, is, is to meet one-on-one -on -one individually with those sport coaches and just let them know your intentions and, and what you're, what you're wanting to do, what your vision is. And, and listen, listen to them. I think just, just hear them out, ask them what they want out of the program and things like that. So that was, that was number one, that first thing that I did is met with the sport coaches. Uh, and then shortly after that, uh, you know, just trying to build relationships with the kids. I mean, you got, you got to get to know these kids. So investing a lot of time in the kids, getting to know them and uh, building relationships with them. Because you got to remember, I mean, like me, I was the new guy on campus. These kids didn't know me. And, you know, you can't just come in there yelling and screaming at them if they, if they don't know you. So you got to build a relationship with them. But I think getting those coaches on your side is, is, is the most important thing. That's, that's step number one. I like that. And, and it's interesting. Uh, I think back to when I started. So I did, you know, I was coming off a grad assistantship and I got my first job. And I'm like, you know, I go from college athletics to high school and and I knew I had to tone it back, but one of the things my strength coach said was, he said, you can always tone it back, right? You can always tone it back, but it's sometimes yeah. hard to go the other way. So right. I just remember what, what it looked like my first year compared to how I coach now. And, and you know, I, I wouldn't say at the first year I was militant by any means, but holy cow, you know, it was just a little bit more edge okay. to it. And, yeah. and in some ways that was good. And in a lot of ways it wasn't. And, mm -hmm. and now, um, Man, it's it's one of those things where every once in a while we have you know a strength coach is, you just turn on you got that edge a little bit and it's it's good you get that response that you need but what I've really been loving is seeing how kids can build that edge that they need um, mm -hmm. with my guidance it's doesn't it's not just because I'm yelling or I'm loud that they want to give the best effort it's because it's more of an internal drive than an external yeah. I think that's super yeah. huge for for kids to learn and understand mm -hmm. instead of just having a a tyrant. So all of that to say, coach, how are you building your athletes up? You said investing in kids, building relationships. How are you building them up um, so that so that you can coach the way that you need to coach and, and really draw the best out of them? Well, uh, 
I think we, we do a lot of stuff with, with character development. I think that's, that's very important at the high school level. Uh, you know, it's not just all about the X's and O's, but you got to make sure you're building these kids just from the mental side. Uh, you know, I mean, there's just, I, I tell our kids so, so much just how important your mindset is and your mentality and how you, how you look at life, how you attack each day. And I think that's so important. And, uh, you know, we, we, we go through uh, a list of core behaviors that, that we have that we, it's kind of like a weekly lesson that we go through and uh, we call them, call them characteristics of an iron patriot. And it's kind of like our theme. And uh, over, I've heard uh, coach Gary Schofield talk about these and, and man, he's, he's went over these eight core behaviors that, that he's talked about multiple times. And I've just, man, I've just been fired up when, when he talks about them. And it's just so, just such good stuff that, that, you know, I, I heard and I was like, man, I want, I want my kids to have that, you know, I want to bring that to my kids. So we have these eight core behaviors and uh, I can go through them if you'd like. Uh, no, first one is, is belief. We talk about belief. What do you believe about yourself? You know, we talk about like, do you believe you're made to be average or do you believe you're made to be great? Like I, I, that's, that's number one. I want my kids to know that, that they were made to be great, not average. Because if you, if you first believe that, that's going to help you set up for, for everything else. I mean, you can't, you can't come in and push yourself hard if you don't first believe you're made to be great, made to be different. Uh, and then number two, we talk about excellence. Uh, every decision you make throughout the day, is that an excellent decision? Are you, I mean, are you pursuing excellence in everything you do, just trying to get 1% better? Um, our third one is wisdom. You know, I want my kids. And when we talk about wisdom, the way I, the way I teach it is, you know, getting out of your comfort zone, you know, not being afraid to fail, uh, you know, because I try to teach our kids, if you never fail, you never learn. If you never learn, you never grow. So you, you, you got to gain that wisdom. You got to be willing to fail. And then uh, our fourth one is discipline. So the way, the way Coach Schofield uh, defines that, and I love it, is, is choosing the right no matter what. You know, can you just make the right decision, make the right choice no matter what, regardless of the circumstance? And uh, number five is perseverance. So we talk about, you know, having a gritty mindset. Uh, persevering through tough times, pushing through tough trials. And uh, our sixth one is positive attitude. I think that's very important to have. No, nobody wants to be around a Debbie Downer or a negative Nancy, just uh, having a positive mindset, positive attitude about the day, about your workout, about just life in general. And uh, number seven is servant leadership, you know, putting others first above ourselves. How can we serve others? How can we be better leaders? And then the last one is passion, you know, talk about, Talk about living life with passion and everything we do. So those eight core behaviors are kind of like, kind of like a lesson, our, our character development, our curriculum, if you want to call it. And uh, this is our first year going through them. Cause like I said, it's my second year here at the school. And last year we did some, we did some character development lessons, but I didn't feel like it was where I wanted it to be or as good as it could have been. So, you know, I spent a lot of time over this quarantine this past semester trying to figure out, how we can do a better job with that. And uh, man, I just, I'll, I'll give all the credit to Coach Schofield for that. I straight up stole it. It's his, but man, it's good stuff. And I want my kids to have it. And I mean, I think, I think every kid should have that. And every coach would want those eight things in their kids. And uh, that's just something we've, we've been, we spend one day a week and uh, we, I kind of teach those lessons like a, like a class almost. And uh, you know, we usually have videos that go with it and, and uh, we're a Christian school, like I said, so we always have a Bible verse that goes with it that kind of helps hammer the message home and, and lets these kids know that, you know, I'm not, I'm not just pulling these uh, from thin air. Like, this is truth in, in, in Scripture, how these are important. So we go through those. Uh, that's kind of like the main thing. So I, I like that. Uh, and you can, throw that, you can throw that out there. You know, Coach Schofield was on, uh, and he was – it was almost this past winter, I think. And, mm -hmm. and I, in the same way I was scribbling down everything that you wrote, I scribbled it down the first time when he was telling me. And I said, I said yeah. where'd you get that? And he goes, well, <laughs> if you check this out, I'm pretty, I don't know if it's, it was Luke or I, it was like, it was uh, him going through it. And he's like, well, this was straight from, from scripture. And this is the way that we took the words and, and made it, you know, for greater Atlanta Christian. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Man, I, I love it because uh, when you can speak truth um, in general, right, to, to anyone, but to your athletes, to give them that mindset, that, that heart, that courage, that, 
that uh, character that they need to, to pursue um, not just excellence in sports, but in life. I, I think that's such a big deal. And, and I, I like what you're saying over, over COVID using that time, that that's where that, that character development stuff that I was, I was trying to kind of get honed in and stuff, had the opportunity to do that during camp, had the opportunity to like hone it in during COVID. So that's good. Uh, I like the, I like the way you went with that. That's awesome. So coach, you, you went through, uh, one of the questions that we were going to talk about is kind of your mission and your core values. And I think you probably tied a lot of that together, but if you would like, if you would narrow this down, what would you say your mission is? What, what do you want to do when a kid leaves your program or, or is in your program rather? Yeah. So, uh, that was something that I kind of got hit square in the eyes with this past, uh, over quarantine, man. Uh, but we were doing, we were sitting in on one of the coaching nexuses with uh, Jeremy Boone and Gary Schofield. And, and one of the topics was, uh, you know, what is, what is your mission statement? What is your mission for your program? And, and honestly, I was kind of embarrassed on the call that I didn't have like a clear mission statement. What is going to guide our program? Uh, Coach Boone uses a phrase for it. I can't remember. There's promise land, your promise land statement. Uh, but so I kind of I kind of spent some some long time figuring out exactly what it is I want my kids to get out of our program what our mission statement is and and you know like I said we're a private Christian school so I'm I take advantage of that uh, you know that's part of the reason why I wanted to come to ACA was so I can share my faith and and everything we do is something that's very important in my life so our our mission statement is to use strength and conditioning as a platform to influence and impact young lives for the kingdom of God. We strive to engage, educate, and empower athletes to develop skills that will translate to improve sport performance and prepare them for life after sport. So uh, we just want to use the weight room as a vehicle to, to teach these kids to, to hopefully be better husbands, better wives one day. And, and to hope, I mean, do we want to improve sport performance? Absolutely. But that is not, that is not my number one, one goal. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm concerned with these kids' hearts, and I, and I want them in the right place. And, and man, if, if, if I can do that through strength and conditioning, man, that, that's awesome. That's, that's what I love about it. So yeah. that, that's kind of like our mission. Uh, truly, and this is where I'm coming from a lot with this, is athletic performance will be a byproduct of a, a well-run culture, right? Sourced in, yeah. sourced in truth and, and sourced in a, in a way that uh, we know what our mission is and, and that we're on mission for it. So I think that's awesome. Um, coach, you know, like you get things rolling or you you come into a school and you're starting a program and there's always this issue. And I don't know if it changes, right? You take over a 20 year old pro program or a program that's been around forever or whatever. It's always this issue. How have you acquired additional funding, right? Like <laughs> every weight room is just like looking for, for nickels and dimes so that they can figure out how to best serve their kids. What do you do for that? Well, uh, yeah, when I, when I came in, I didn't have a dime for, for anything strength and conditioning. I, I, had, to, I had to borrow some money from, from our football program just to purchase a few trap bars. Uh, but, man, shortly, you know, I got there in June of last year, and I knew critical reload was something that I wanted to be on. I, wanted, I, I heard all our coaches, all my buddies talking about it, and I knew we had to have it. So, in September of last year, we pulled the plug and, and got Critical Reload, and that has been our number one best fundraiser or best way to raise money we ever could do. Uh, and, and not only that, like I tell our kids all the time, like, like, you know, you're investing in our program to hopefully have nice things for you guys to give you all a great experience training, but you're getting quality proteins and carbohydrates that you need right after a workout. So it's a double win for everybody. Uh, I mean, it's cold right there when they get it. The kids absolutely love it. It tastes amazing. Uh, so critical reloads, that's been number one. Uh, we've, done, we've done a few t-shirt sales, uh, you know, just that, that, that helps out some. And another thing that, uh, that we did last year is uh, we did a Chipotle uh, spirit night. So I am a Chipotle fanatic. I probably eat there twice a week. And uh, I, I was talking to Garrett Keith, actually, and he, he mentioned that they did this. And so I was like, man, we got to do this. So uh, I talked to their manager, and it was, a, it, was, it was probably the easiest fundraiser I've ever been a part of in my life. You just, I mean, we just had to promote it. And I got all the kids to, to go to Chipotle that night. And, 
And uh, <laughs> it was it was probably we I think we got like I think three hundred bucks from it. But that that purchases bands, you know. I mean, or anything like that. So anything like that can help. Uh, so it was that that was pretty cool uh, going to Chipotle that night and literally seeing it filled with ACA kids and parents. So hopefully when all this COVID stuff dies down, we'll definitely do that again. Yeah, that's great. I, I think uh, you can get away with mixing food in the fundraiser. That's a pretty good deal. So <laughs> I would, uh, I, I'm interested in learning more about critical reload. I, I, there's other coaches that have been on and talked about that. We're in a unique position right now where we, we are very limited by, um, the nutrition that we can sell at, at school and stuff. So I just want to look into that more. So I might pick your brain a little bit more about that. And I'm sure other coaches might reach out after they hear, you know, like that it's a great way to, to do post-workout fueling, but yeah. also get money for your program. So um, good stuff there, coach. What about, um, about just like switching gears here and moving okay. into a little bit more of your training philosophy? And yeah. like I tell a lot of coaches on here, you know, training philosophy is such a big thing, right? So um, however you want to define that or talk about training in general, uh, what, what do you want to tell us about uh, your training and what you guys do at ACA? Well, uh, you know, we're, we're ground-based, multi-joint movements, uh, multi-planes. My big thing is I try, I'm, I'm trying to expose our kids to as many different movements and 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 planes of motion as possible because i mean our our like like i'm stealing again from gary but prepare and protect is like our number one motto so like we want to you know if we if, to do that you got to prepare them for the game and you got to protect them and, and i and that, another thing that i tell our kids all the time is i want them to play more and play better so like i that's kind of like my that's kind of like my way of connecting with the kids. Like I ask them, like, do you want to play more? Do you want to play better this year? And they're like, absolutely, coach. And I'm like, I want that for you too, okay? So everything we do in there, I'm just trying to keep them healthy because if they, if they can't play, they can't perform the sport they love, they can't help our teams. So I think, I think the, in my opinion, we try, to, we try to expose them to a lot of different planes of motions. We throw in uh, a lot of tempos. Uh, we, do, we, we do eccentrics and isometrics, kind of mix them in. Uh, whenever we can, we do, we do that a, a lot more more so with our our like block zero kids, but even 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 some more with our older kids. So uh, you know, I'm I'm heavily influenced by Joe Ken, so we do run a tier system. I just think the tier system, in my opinion, is the most simple uh, way to train a multi sport high school athlete, which is what I train every day. Uh, we have. Most all of our kids, I would I would probably say 80% of our kids are multi-sport athletes, and just that that tier system. We do a three-day uh, tier system approach. It just works for me, and uh, it's just I'm a I'm a simple-minded coach. I like to keep things simple, and and that's what works best for us. Uh, we do a lot of unilateral movements. Uh, I love single leg work. We love single single arm work. Uh, mix that in. And uh, just the main thing I always preach to our kids too that that's really important is moving well. Is, is our highest priority. Uh, the, moment, the moment our percentages go up and my kids' technique starts breaking down, even the smallest or anything, I, I'm, I'm quick to, to just bring them back in and remind them. Like guys, like, you know, as soon as your form starts breaking down or your technique starts breaking down, we're wasting our time. It is, it is not gonna translate. So they know with me that the movement quality is, is numero uno, most important. Uh, we do a block system. So with my situation, it's, it's, it's awesome, but it's also a challenge. I, in some of my classes, I may have an eighth grader training alongside a senior. Uh, so, you know, we have uh, four blocks. We have block zero, block one, block two, block three. And uh, we divide those up based off the kids' uh, capabilities. And it gives us, I mean, it, it helps the kids meet them where they're at, you know. So, I mean, you know, I'm not gonna not gonna force a brand new eighth grader or a brand new female athlete that's never been in the weight room to just come in and just throw a bar on her back and say we're we're squatting that day. So uh, I think it helps the kids kind of ease any any uh, worry that they may have with the weight room things like that. But uh, with my block my block zero, my kids have to stay in there a minimum of three weeks. So that's kind of like the minimum. So it doesn't matter if. If you're a transfer kid and, and you're a Division One athlete, if I've never trained you before, if I've never seen you, 
I'm going to put you in block zero. And, uh, and the kids, I, I pull them aside and make sure they understand why. Because when you tell them why, you know, I just, I, you know, I think it helps them understand better. And, uh, you know, some kids stay in block zero for longer. It just depends. Uh, there's not really a criteria to get out of block zero. It's just kind of more like an eye test for me. So, uh, like, that for perfect example, this semester, I had a lot of new students uh, registered for my class. And uh, so I had a lot of block zero kids. And uh, about three or four weeks after it, I could just, I could tell with some of them, they they were ready. So we bump them up to block one. Uh, block one is going to be, uh, a lot of dumbbell work. Uh, uh, you know, we don't, we don't hurl it. We, the only time we touch the bar in block one is if I'm teaching them like a zombie squat or something like that, just trying to get them ready for that front squat. And block two would be our, our front squatting and uh, with a barbell, uh, our overhead press, uh, our hang clean. And then block three would be more your traditional uh, clean from the floor, back squat, bench press. Uh, so, you know, the goal, like I tell the kids all the time, the goal is not to get to block two or block three, uh, you know, by the end of the semester or by the end of the year. Like there's like kid, like I try to tell them like you're getting a quality training session for you. That is, that is perfectly designed for you where you're at. Uh, so don't think just cause you're in block zero or block one, you're not getting a quality training session. You're getting it. You're getting exactly what you need. But, uh, but I, I wouldn't lie if I didn't, say I try to uh, challenge some kids sometimes, especially my female athletes that sometimes maybe want to stick around and block one. And, and, um, and you know, I have to kind of, I have to kind of push them a little bit, let them know like you're, you're ready for block two. Uh, so that's kind of, that's kind of the gist of my training philosophy. Uh, move, move well. I, t I tell them all the time, I want to be really good at simple things, uh, whether that's squatting, hinging, chin ups, push ups lunges, jumps. I just, if, if you walked into my weight room, I, it, it probably looked like a lot of simple stuff going on, but I think that's in my opinion. That's what high school kids need. Uh, so we don't do a lot of fancy stuff, but we try to do the simple things really well. That's awesome. I, I really look at um, when I hear from a high school coach, a college coach, uh, just a, even a private sector, really, when I hear the training philosophy, I just want to see what is important to them, you know, and, and when you say we want to, we want to move well, you know, like I relate to that. I, I see where it's coming from. And, and uh, you know, not that I, everybody has to be similar to what I do or exactly what you do or anything, but really when you can hone in what you think is important and then drive that home to your student athletes and they understand where you're coming from and how it's going to make them like what you say, play more, play better. Um, that's, that's awesome. So, uh, you know, you, you dove into your block system and how you'll progress them and all that type of stuff. And, and right now you said you got zero, one, two, and three. Okay. And, and that's pretty good within a year and a half. Will that ever progress more? And that's one of the questions I had because I asked somebody on Twitter here recently, they said, it took me four years to get to block four with my student athletes, right? Um, basically implemented one year at a time and progress people and stuff. And I see where it's coming from, you know, um, but what, what does that look like for you? Are, are you going to hop into a, a block four? I mean, what's it even look like block five? What, whatever that looks like for you. Is that something that you'll do in the future? Uh, I've, I've definitely thought about that. Uh, you know, I've, I've had kids uh, ask me all the time, like, Coach, what, what, what is, when do we get to block four? What is it like my block three kids? And I'm like, there is no block four uh, yet, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you always have that yet. You'll get there. You'll get there. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think if, if I did design a block four, I think it would be mainly a lot of velocity-based training, which I don't have the tools to do yet or the knowledge yet to – to run something like that. Uh, and I'm not afraid to admit that. Uh, I want, I want to learn more about it, but, but I'm not there yet. Uh, so I think, you know, eventually, you know, as, as we raise more money, I would love to get some, some push bands or, or maybe even a Tendo or something like that and, and uh, study and learn how to implement it. Uh, definitely that if we had a block four, that would be definitely be my elite of, of elite athletes, which, which I can probably only count, like on, on one hand right now that would be in a block four if we had it uh, just cause I'm still, we're still progressing our kids. Uh, but you know, it definitely be a lot of velocity based training, a lot of speed stuff. Uh, like I've, I've, I've listened to Mark Hoover. Like I know he does a phenomenal job with BBT and, 
And uh, I know he gets great results. So if I ever did get to that point, I know I'd be calling him and, and picking his brain. So he's a dude. He does he does a lot of good stuff. I, yeah. I called him a couple of weeks back, and he's always just like wanting to learn and knowing the next thing. And so I, yeah. I just ask him, you know, what you what are you learning right now? Because it pushes me, right? So I, yeah. that's a good guy to reach out to. Hey, um, you you alluded to it a little bit. You know, you talked about when you get to a place, uh, you're going to talk to head coaches. You're going to tell them their, your vision, and you're also going to listen to what they want, right? And so you had to cast a vision in some way when, it, when you're in this coach's meeting. And one of the things that, that I wanted to ask you about is what is your vision, you know, now, but maybe into the future, we can go five, yeah. ten years down the road. What's it look like for you? No, oh, man, you're about to get me fired up. Uh, <laughs> man, uh, I got – I definitely have a vision of where I want it to be and, and we're not there yet, but I keep telling myself we're, I'm only in year two. And, and, you know, I look at, I look at guys like, uh, like Micah Kurtz and Garrett Keith, who's, who's been at their schools for a long time and, and are just, just crushing it and killing it. And it's like, it's like inspiration and motivation to me to try to get my program to, to where they're at. Uh, but definitely like some clear goals that I want, I, I want to get all of our female athletes on board, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough situation I'm in right now, and it's going to take some time. But like I said, our classes, the way they're set up is we rotate throughout the day. So my it's kind of confusing, but like my second period, I may see them at 9 o'clock on a Monday and then like 2 o'clock on a Thursday. So with that being said, it's, it's a struggle when to get our girls bought into maybe getting a tad bit sweaty during the day. Uh, so things like that, but I definitely want to get all of our female athletes bought in. The girls that I have right now that are that are bought in, they are they are crushing it and killing it, and I'm so dang proud of them. Uh, but I know that it's it's going to take some time. Uh, definitely summer training. So my my first summer here was my first summer, so we just had to do the best we could, and then kind of quarantine and Corona kind of screwed up this summer. Uh, but I definitely want to get to where we're having, you know, kids are there 75, 80 percent of the time during the summer and, and showing up and training and, and being there. And uh, so from that standpoint, that's that's a vision of, of where I want kids to be. Uh, from a training standpoint, I guess just just keep pushing, man. Just keep uh, I, I like where we're at right now, but I know we can get a lot better and just getting more kids in that weight room, because I know when I can get more kids in there. I can make a bigger difference. And uh, I know there's just, there's so many athletes walking that school, walking in that school right now that, that aren't training yet, that aren't in that weight room. And uh, I just want to somehow pull them in there. Cause I know once I get them in there, I know I can, I can, I can get them hooked. I can, I can get them in there, but that's, it's, that's, that's the struggle. That's, that's the vision we're shooting for. Uh, so definitely, definitely that. I just want to get more kids in there. I like the uh, when you can struggle for something when it's an actual challenge. I think that makes you buy in that much more too. So I, yeah. as a coach, you know, like as a person that wants to drive a program forward, so that's exciting, coach. I'm, I'm excited for you, and I'm happy that you like to get pumped up about it. Like that's that's a good deal. Um, it kind of leads into the, this next question, and and um, it's the namesake of the show. We talk about it almost every yeah. single show. Uh, how are you making the big time where you're at? How, what, what is it that keeps you fired up? What, what is it that, uh, um, that you're just investing in so much and you think you're making the big time where you're at? Uh, man, I mean, this, this is my big time. Uh, you know, I've, when, I, when I decided I wanted to be a strength coach, you know, kind of shortly, kind of probably halfway through my Bama years, I decided like high school was where I wanted to be at, where I could make the biggest impact, the biggest difference. And I just, I like, I saw it as a need because there's just, there's so many high schools that don't have qualified strength and conditioning coaches. And I just knew that I could make a difference and make the biggest impact at the high school level. Not just from a, not just from an athletic and training standpoint, but from a, from a personal standpoint, just because at that age from, from, you know, we're talking like seventh grade, like 13, 12, 13 years old to 18. There's just so, such, such a molding time where you can really invest in them and, and, and make a difference and, and, and be with them for an extended amount of time. And uh, so I knew I wanted to be at a high school. And then I knew uh, it's, it's kind of funny, man. I went and visited uh, Garrett Keith one day. This was probably a couple years back at Westminster. And I spent the whole day with him. 
And uh, this, was, this was still when I was at Bibb County working part-time, but I came home to my wife and I said, man, Garrett Keith has the dream job. Like if I could have his situation, that would just be my dream, like my big time. And, uh, you know, American Christian Academy called and, and, and they were basically wanting to do the same thing that, that they do up there. And I was like, man, this is perfect. And uh, so, you know, I, I, I don't plan on leaving anytime soon. I, 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 I haven't made at ACA. I love it there. I love the people. I love the kids. I love the school. I love working in a Christian environment. Uh, it's just, I just, I just can't say how blessed I am to be there. A lot of times I feel like I'm stealing money, honestly, just cause I, I look forward to, to work every day. I mean, I tell, I tell our kids all the time. Uh, I'm like, man, I'm like, who's got a better job. I, and I kind of say it selfishly, but I'm like, who's got a better job than me. I was like, I get to, I get to train y'all during the day and hang out with y'all and Blair loud music and wear sweatpants and, a, and gym shorts and a t-shirt to work every day. And I get to just train y'all and make y'all better and, and invest in y'all. It's just like, it's the most fulfilling, joyous thing in the world. And I just, I just love what I do. And uh, so, so that's my, and you know, a lot that's, and, and a lot of people ask me, like I have kids ask me and even parents ask me if I'm interested in, you know, you ever want to go to the college level? And I just honestly know, like, I just, I feel like high school is where it's at. It's, it's the best of the best. And uh, I just feel like nobody's got it better than us. And uh, so I don't, I don't plan on leaving anytime soon. And uh, I hope I can stay at ACA for a really long time and, and see the kids uh, grow up. That's what I'm most excited about. Cause I had, I had a solid group of uh, middle school kids this summer and uh, they showed up like every day. And I just remember th- I was, I was watching, I was training them and I was like, man, these kids are 12, 13 years old. And imagine where they could be when they are 16, 17 years old, they're going to be a totally different kid. And uh, just, just, that's what I'm most excited about after, you know, five or six years at ACA, seeing those kids that were 13 years old and then watching them literally grow up and develop, uh, you know, physically, mentally, spiritually, that's just, that's what I'm most fired up and excited about. So that is, that is my big time. Hey, you're speaking to me, coach. That's awesome. I, I think, uh, I think so many people don't even realize uh, I don't know if it's the impact or the opportunity or whatever the words would be that a high school strength coach can have when you're around these athletes, these students, day in, day out, for something where I, I love strength and conditioning as that metaphor for life anyway, because it's everything's incremental, everything's slower, everything is just like it takes a lot of work and to see progress and to see all this stuff and and to be a part of that, you know, from a seventh grader all the way to a senior and to, to be a part of somebody's life for that long is so fun. And it's so cool to be able to um, invest in, in people for that long. And yeah. yeah, I think I think you're hitting the nail on the head right there. It's it's really, really fun. Um, and I, I might have to start telling that to my kids. I tell them it's my dream job, but to say, you know, uh, can, who has a better job than me? Just ask him that, you know. That's, <laughs> I'm, being, I'm like, and I, and I kind of use that to kind of teach them, like, guys, like, find something. When you're, when you're looking for a job one day, when you're looking for a career, like, do not get caught up in the money. Like, find something that you are passionate about and that you truly love doing, and mm-hmm. you're going to be so much happier and just so much fo- more fulfilled. Because cause that, was, that was me coming out of high school, man. I was just trying to find – Whatever career uh, had the most money, I, that's that's what I was after, and it was kind of like halfway through college, I realized it was about it was probably after that 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 internship at Godspeed when I realized like, man, this is what I'm made to do, you know. As long as I make enough to make a living for for my wife and my family, I'm I'm good, man. Yeah, that's awesome. No, I I think that's that's great that that you had that realization. It's kind of funny. That's about the same time as me when I. Is part way through college where I'm just like, this is what I want to do. And both my parents are teachers. So I was okay with the, with rolling with, you know, teacher pay and, and, uh, and being able to be around students all the time. So it's awesome. Yeah. Coach, uh, to switch gears here again. And, and well, maybe I should do this before, before we jump to the finisher questions, is there anything else that that you want to talk about or anything else that you want to make sure the listeners know about you or ACA or 
or your vision for your program or anything? Uh, I, th I think, I think we hit it, man. I don't, I don't think there's anything else. That's good. I just, the reason why I asked that is I just want to make sure our listeners have an opportunity to really get a grasp of where you're coming from and where you're at. And I, I think you've done a great job of that. I just wanted to make sure. And then, you know, after these finisher questions, we'll also put out your contact information. And uh, I want people to be able to reach out to you and ask you more and really, really learn about your situation and, and dive in deeper. So um, let's start out with these finisher questions and we can let you kind of talk about the best way to contact you after. Cool. All right. All right so finisher question number one, what is your favorite book? Uh, that's, it's hard to pick just one cause I'm, I'm a big reader and I'm looking at my bookshelf right here, but, uh, if I had to pick my all time favorite book, it would probably have to be the purpose driven life by Rick Warren. Uh, I read that, uh, kind of towards my Taylor towards my end years of college. And, uh, it just probably had the biggest impact on my life, uh, to this day, it just kind of made me realize what it, what it looked like to live on purpose and to live out your purpose in your life and uh, kind of helped me. It really helped me define uh, my purpose and why I'm here and uh, my passion. Uh, you know, my, my passion is, my passion is strength and conditioning and then working with high school kids. And my purpose is, uh, you know, making Jesus's name known and everything I do. So uh, if I can connect those together, then I'm, then I'm, then I'm doing all right. I'm living, living the way I'm supposed to. So. That's good stuff. Go about a person that's influenced you the most and that can be if you want it to be a strength and conditioning wise go for it but also if you want that to be just in life in general uh i mean i personally i'd have to say my wife uh and we've been together since i was 13 years old so she's she was stuck with me a long time before i ever became a coach and, and she didn't have any idea what she was getting into and uh, you know, it's, it's tough being a coach's wife, even even a strength coach's wife, man, because you know the schedule, you know how it is, and she has just been my rock, and she she makes me want to be a better man, and she uh, she's definitely been a big influence on who I am and, and who I want to be, and uh, I just, uh, she's my best friend, so. That's awesome. Now you're going to have to make her listen to the show so she can get to the end and hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably try to fast forward to the end. <laughs> hey, check this one out. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> um, favorite quote. What's what do you got for your favorite quote? Oh man, it's got to come from Jeremy Boone. If your presence doesn't make an impact, your absence won't make a difference. I like that. That's a really good one. I'm gonna have to write that down. Jeremy's got all sorts of good stuff, man. I yep. you learn for days from that guy. All right. Um, favorite hobby outside of training. Uh, I'd, I'd probably say just uh, spending time with family. Uh, I got a great family. Spend a lot, love spending time with them. Uh, reading, I love I love reading anything uh, on leadership or strength and conditioning or, or coaching or uh, just my faith, things like that. So probably probably reading, spending time with family. If I'm not training or working, that's that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Those are good. I like, uh, I like to make sure that people have hobbies outside of their training and their work. So, yeah, <laughs> All right, coach. Uh, last question here. Small school coach who's killing it and deserves a shout out. Can I give you two? Uh, I suppose. I guess we'll, we'll allow that. All right. Number one, I'm, I think this guy's been mentioned before, but he, he is awesome. His name's Chad Phillips from Westbrook Christian Academy. Uh, this guy, man, I heard him speak for the first time at a NHSSCA uh, Alabama clinic a couple years back. And I was just blown away with his passion and his creativity. He's, he's probably the most creative guy I've ever known in strength and conditioning. Just the stuff that he, the, the stuff that he comes up with, with his situation where he's at is just, it's unmatched. Uh, and then the second guy is Brandon, Brandon Herring from Hewitt Trustful High School. That guy, I'm, He's, he's been a great friend to me, really helped me out a lot. And I've just been really impressed with this guy because he, you know, he started out as a football coach and kind of got into strength and conditioning uh, a little late as far as like his age, you know, but that man just dove headfirst into strength and conditioning. And he's learned so much just in a short amount of time that he's been in strength and conditioning 
uh, running weight rooms. And, and he's one of the most qualified guys and smart guys that I know. So he's, he's killing it where he's at. That's awesome. I'll have to reach out to those guys. And, and uh, you know, one of the things that I like about this show is just getting good referrals like this. So it's awesome that you give too just so that we can continue to keep this train rolling and to find those coaches that are making the big time where they're at. So coach, um, I'm thankful for you getting on here. I'm thankful for your time. And uh, I'm thankful that you want to make the big time where you're at and share that with other people. What is the best way um, for people to contact you, for them to get a hold of you so that they can learn more about your situation? Uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on, I'm on Instagram. I have my own personal Instagram. And then we have our, our ACA strength Instagram where I, I post a lot of, stuff on our stories throughout the day to, to try to give the kids some, some uh, social media time that they love so much. And uh, so I'm on, I'm on Twitter and, and Instagram. You can email me, call me. I, I love talking about this stuff and, and I'm, I'm open to help. I want to help any way I can. So I would love to hear some from some coaches. Awesome. And we'll have all that contact information that he mentioned in the show notes. Uh, coach, like I said before, thankful to have you on. Thankful that uh, you're trying to make the big time where you're at and, and thankful that your student athletes get to be able to be a part of that. So, um, Coach, uh, just Monday night here, right, um, starting out the new week, I, I'm refreshed. I'm revived. I, you know, I'm, I'm excited. And so thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate you bringing me on. This has been fun. I've enjoyed it. And uh, I really respect what you and, and Coach Rosier and Coach uh, Berg are doing. Man, it's just – it's awesome. Y'all are talking to these, talking these coaches and recording them so we can listen to them and learn, learn more. So, thank you. Thanks, Coach.